Hey guys, it's X, and welcome to a League of Legends video. Now, there are a couple of reasons that I wanted to do this video, and it's for a good cause, so I hope you guys will listen in on this, and uh, I hope a lot of you will get on board. And I'm talking primarily to those of you who have never played League of Legends, who are interested in playing League of Legends, or who will be interested after seeing this video. You guys are the ones I'm talking primarily to. But uh, primarily, I just wanted to play this game uh, because I felt like playing it, and I played it last year, and uh, I've recently come back to it, and I'm having a blast with it. But second... Secondly, um, a viewer of mine who goes by the name of Soul Magica on League of Legends, he uh, sent me a message on YouTube letting me know that he has been uh, diagnosed with glaucoma. And uh, what, what that does, for those of you who don't know, is it degenerates your eyes and your vision uh, over a period of time so that eventually it leaves you completely blind. And uh, this happens within a year or two, usually. Um, so what he's doing is he's doing all the things that he loves that require his eyesight, which are a lot of things, obviously. I mean, imagine all the things that you love that require your eyesight. Uh, so he's doing all the things that he loves while he has his eyesight before his life changes forever. And uh, you have my condolences, Soul Magica. Uh, so he sent me this message, and uh, he let me know that uh, he, he loves League of Legends. That's one of the things that he's in, that he's really into that he's doing, and uh, Riot Games, who publishes League of Legends, they're the creators of League of Legends as well. They uh, they have a referral program, and every player gets a referral link to refer other players to the game. And if any player refers a lot of people, like ten thousand people, that player will be flown out to the League of Legends offices, to Riot Games offices, and they'll be able to design a champion of their own. Uh, and that's something he would like to do. He would like to leave his mark in one of his favorite games before he can no longer play it anymore. So I have put his referral link in the video description. If you are interested in playing, playing League of Legends, please, please, please use that link. League of Legends costs nothing to play. Um, in order for it to count, you have to use his referral link, and you have to play to level 5, just so you guys know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show you a video on... Uh, about League of Legends, a game that I played. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. And I hope it'll get you interested enough in playing so that you can uh, help Soul Magica out. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into the game. All right, so when you first start off, you start off near a shop and you can click on the shopkeep and you can buy an item for your character or however many items your 475 gold will let you start off with. And uh, I prefer to start off with a Makey Pendant and you can see here it builds up to a bigger item and that's one of the things that you can do in this game. I also buy two mana potions to start out and uh, your build depends a lot on how you plan on playing your character, like what strategy you plan on undertaking. And uh, I'm actually going the middle lane here. Let me go ahead and explain the, the the basics of the game. You have two nexuses, or is that nexi? I don't know. Each team Shut up, Pantheon. Each team has a nexus on either side of the map. They are here and here. This one is ours, the one in the blue lower left, and the one in the top right over here is the enemy's nexus. Your goal is to get through one of these three lanes that you can see if you look at the mini-map in the lower right. That's where I'm explaining all this. Is to... Your goal is to get through one of these three lanes, or all of these three lanes, uh, by destroying the three turrets in each of the lanes and reaching the enemy nexus and destroying the nexus. That's how you win the game, or you force your opponent to surrender, just like in StarCraft if there's a point where they know they're going to lose and they can't come back, uh, the, team, the enemy team can surrender and you can win the game that way as well. Alright, for more experienced players, you will notice that I am in the, uh, and I think minions are about to spawn, so I should just shut up for a second. Minions have spawned. There we go. All right. <clears throat> I don't like to talk over the voices in the game. Um, but yeah, more experienced players, you'll notice that, yes, I am Pantheon, and yes, I am in the middle lane. And you'll also notice that we have a Rise on our team, and Rise would be the better uh, the better bet <laughs> for that purpose. But uh, Rise was actually in Ventrilo with one of his friends, and they wanted to lane together. So that left... Uh, obviously not Warwick. Warwick is not going to go middle lane. That left me or uh, Gangplank to take the middle lane, and uh, Gangplank didn't want to. So I'm taking the middle lane, and I have done this before as Pantheon. Actually, Pantheon is a pretty strong character for the middle lane if you play him right. I'm going up against an Ezreal here. Uh, Ezreal is a caster type character. All of his abilities are skill shot based. He has to aim them manually. Now, I know this, and that gives me a definite advantage, because I know... Uh, personally, that I am quite good at dodging skill shots. See right there, I just dodged a very good one. Um, 
So, my goal here is, and the reason I picked a bunch of mana items as Pantheon instead of going for attack power first, see, my character is a melee type character, and he, uh, he thrives on mana and mostly attack power because he's melee, uh, but instead of buying attack power items, I bought mana items because my one ranged attack is actually very, ma very mana efficient, and, uh, you usually want to have a ranged character in the middle lane, not a melee character, but Pantheon can serve as a fairly uh, as a fair ranged character if you get him mana items, because his mana runs out very slowly. And you can see here I'm using my ranged attack to pick off minions, and I'm using my ranged attack to, uh, to keep Ezreal back, to put him on the defensive while dodging his skill shots. Um, and the way you do that is you always want to run... Um, at a perpendicular angle towards your skill shot, uh, towards Ezreal. Well, not towards him, but a uh, perpendicular, yeah, a per perpendicular angular to angle towards him. I'm getting caught up on my own words here. And you can see here I'm putting him on the defensive by continually hitting him with the spe spear shot, but I make a mistake and I attack him when I have no minions of my own around and there are nothing but minions of his all around him. So I actually am punished quite quite severely for that. I'm very low on health. Uh, at this stage in the game, it's crucial that you don't return to town yet. You don't... And a turret takes out one of our allies, but... But... There we go. Our rise actually draws first blood in one of the other lanes. And if you look at the... If, at, you look at the minimap in the lower right, you can see that my other teammates and the enemy's teammates are actually doing something similar to this in the other lanes, but they're doing two-on-two -two matchups. Now, the middle lane character will get a lot more experience because he doesn't have to share it with anybody because he's fighting one-on-one -on -one against an enemy opponent. And, uh... And all the experience that you get from killing minions is going straight to that one character. So that's that's the benefit you get for going in the middle lane. And Pantheon is a good bet uh, for the middle lane if he's played right. And and he has to be up against the right type of character. Like, Ezreal is a great opponent for Pantheon to go middle lane against. If I was going up against uh, some other ranged character like Ash, who could really, really outrange me, I would have to switch lanes because there'd be no way that I could really take Ash in the middle lane as Pantheon. So it's all it's all strategy-based. It's all knowledge-based. We can see here I punish Ezreal for overextending himself. He uses a heal to try and get away, but then I use my ghost ability, and I'm able to barely pick him off before he gets to his turret with my ranged attack. That was absolutely excellent. That is one of the uh, most important things in this game, is punishing your opponents for the mistakes they make, and you have to punish them hard as well, because uh, this game is very... It's very strategic. Anyway, after taking out Ezreal, I return back to town, and you can see here I'm upgrading my items. I don't see a lot of new tutorial videos for League of Legends actually going through this process, but you can see that Mickey Pendant that I bought actually upgrades into this little teardrop item, and that's an actually actually an upgraded version of that Mickey Pendant, and that will in turn become a much bigger item, and that, the item that I'm going for here is the Masamune. It's a sword that gives me mana, and it turns my mana into attack power. So it's a great item for Pantheon because he, he is very mana intensive, and he is very attack power intensive so getting it early is important because every time you attack with the Masamune in your inventory and here I'm gonna use my ultimate ability on Ezreal watch this my ultimate ability is called Grand Skyfall and it drops right on top of my opponent after a short casting time and it deals some damage I am able to stun him but he uses his flash ability to get away he's running I do hit him with a spear he barely survives the spear attack and I overextend myself making a huge mistake and I am able I'm not able to take the damage from the turret the turret does defeat me Fortunately for me, this is my only death in the game, and I use this death with the goal that I have to take the opportunity and actually just buy a, a, a new weapon to increase my attack power. A little later, I do come into the game. Uh, I do come back into the middle lane, try and get some revenge here. You can see I'm still pushing Ezreal back, even though I have suffered a death. Uh, but he does overextend yet again, and I'm able to punish him using my Ghost ability and my Heart Seeker Strike. I do tower dive him again. I don't learn my lesson, apparently, but I knew I could get him this time. I knew I had the health to do it. My, uh... My Aegis of Zidonia's shield was up, so I was able to, I was able to block one of the turret attacks, and that's what actually helped me survive. And you can see my teammates are actually absolutely ravaging uh, the enemy team in the other lanes as well. All right. So shortly after taking down Ezreal, and after my team wins fights, several fights in the other lanes, I do return home to uh, fully upgrade the Masamune. You can see I've fully fully upgraded it now that that's done i can pick up my boots of speed and this will allow me to run faster on the battlefield and you can see that too upgrades into something bigger when combined with another item so the combination system in this game is actually very intricate and there's a lot of customization for your character now I, you can see here i see warwick is low on health and he's retreating i don't want him to use his recall ability so i use my grand skyfall which is my ultimate to catch up to him even behind his own turret and i and i do gain a killing spree off of him meaning i've killed several opponents without myself dying so that is 
that is an excellent move of uh, excellent use of Grand Skyfall to go behind the enemy defenses. Shortly after taking out Warwick, I take out that small mob of enemies and I join my teammates in attacking this turret. You can see here we have Gangplank, Warwick, and myself all beating on this turret with my turrets with our with our minions taking the uh, hits from the turret blast. So we destroy a turret here, and Garen takes out an enemy of the lane. You can use this tall grass. You can see me hiding in that tall grass there with my. Uh, shield spinning around me. Uh, I am hiding in this tall grass to set up an ambush. I do mark the enemy Garen, who is this guy with the big sword. You can see I mark him by pressing G on the keyboard and clicking on him. I mark him for death, so that tells my Garen here in the left lane to uh, attack him along with me. So we both target him. I hit him. I stun him. No, I don't stun him. I hit him with a shield. Uh, Garen goes in. We are attacking. My goal, I'm getting focused down here. My goal is to bring them back to the turret. They fall for the trap. The uh, enemy Krasis, I think that's his name, Krasis, uses his ultimate ability to become a very durable tank type character, but I stun him near the turret, I get the kill, the enemy Garen comes in like a fool, and he is absolutely devastated as well, so that little ambush attack turned out very, very nicely for me and Garen here in this lane. So you can use that tall grass to your advantage, and I'm sorry if I'm talking very quickly, guys. <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be using this as a, as a method to... Uh, show newer players how to how to play the game or what it's, what it's all about. So we, here we see a Cho'Gath coming into the high grass with me and this is a good team fight here. I'm almost dead. My uh, Gangplank ally, he uses his heal ability and then his ultimate to cut off the enemies at the pass. Now, myself having taken much, a lot of damage, I should retreat, but I know that the enemy is going to be retreating to this particular location where I'm using my Grand Skyfall and I cut them off with it and the landing kills Ezreal and we are just barely not able to get Cho'Gath. Ah, but that was a very good team fight. I like how that turned out. Randy. It was good use of both of our ultimates, mine and Gangplank. Gangplank himself doesn't survive. Uh, he does survive, but not with too much HP. A little bit later in the game, we can see I'm leading a group of minions towards an enemy turret. And uh, leading some minions into a turret is a very good idea if you know the enemy is either down on the... Uh, is either on the ropes or they're in different lanes because it allows you to take out a turret by yourself at, along with the help of your minions. As long as you don't lead the charge uh, ahead of your minions and the turret will target the minions every time. So I am able to take out this turret and I, uh, I'm always looking at other parts of the map. I'm hardly ever looking at myself if it's not necessary. And here I see that Garen is waiting by his turret for defense. And I'm going to use my Grand Skyfall ability to force him into the enemies. See, here we go. He can't retreat now. There's, he has... He has to attack my guys, or he has to die, and I do get him with the uh, with the following strike. That was kind of a kill steal on my part. I didn't mean to actually steal the kill. I was just trying to force Garen towards my friends uh, so that he couldn't hide from the protection of his turret. Having destroyed that turret, the enemy does surrender. The enemy surrenders, and we can see that their nexus explode. Victory! Wow, that was actually very intense. That was difficult to commentate. <laughs> but yes, we do take the victory, and I'm going to go ahead and put the score screen up here in just a moment. And here is the score screen. Uh, here we can see that nobody actually dropped from the game. Nobody left. Everyone is actually... Uh, everyone stayed, and that's, that's kind of rare. You don't always see that, but uh, yeah, everyone did stay in the game even on the enemy team so that's that's that, that's pretty good anyway <laughs> uh, again guys that was that was a good game I like how that played out uh, and I know I'm gonna get a lot of criticism because the League of Legends community is filled with a bunch of people who think they know the only way to play the game when really you can play it in several different ways don't let people tell you that the way you're playing is wrong because uh, if it fits your strategy and if it seems to be working for you I say you do it um, for instance, like I said earlier, playing in the middle lane as Pantheon is very unorthodox, but it can be done, and it can be done successfully. You just have to make sure the conditions are right for it, and in this case, they happen to be. And uh, getting Pantheon his ultimate ability early is important in a team, because Pantheon is an incredibly devastating character if he's if he's out-leveling people and if he's got the right items. So putting him in the middle lane can definitely, definitely benefit a team. But don't take the middle lane away from somebody who... Uh, from somebody who could make better use of it. Uh, Ash is a much better choice than Pantheon for the middle lane. Um, I wouldn't say Corky is, but anyway, there are several There are several other characters who could do a better job, but um, given fewer options, Pantheon is a great way to, to go for the middle lane. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and again, if you are interested in this, please use the referral link down below, because I, as I explained in the beginning, uh, uh, it would be really useful to get several referrals um, a whole bunch of referrals on that link to really help someone who's who's really down on their luck. So, uh, yeah, anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.